Today on Vegan Freak Radio, we ask, do Republicans love to kill small animals? We do a follow-up to a few points from last week's health show, do your voicemails and emails, and we run the second Vegan Freak Radio interview with Sarah Kramer, all this week on Vegan Freak Radio number 67 for the 12th of April, 2007. And now, your hosts who proudly say fuck you to the FCC, Bob and Jenna. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I, I uh, fucked up there. Sorry. I messed up. My bad. I screwed up. I'm, I screwed up. What can I say? Let me turn this down a little more. It's a little loud. I'm still getting used to our new equipment. <laughs> well, not new equipment, new software. Yeah. So, uh, hey, welcome back. I um, hope everybody's doing well out there. Yep, hope you're all staying healthy after last week's show. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So uh, let's just get right into the show because we have a, a bunch of things to do and I want to do them. And uh, I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to run out of energy. Okay. Well, let's do them. Then. Okay. Before we get started, I want to make an announcement. Uh, a happy announcement. For those of you that have been listening to the show for a while, you know who Dino is or if you've been on our forums. Um, Dino has been on the show. He will be on the show again next week um, if things don't fall through, but they shouldn't. And uh, I just want to say, Dino has been working on a cookbook all this time, and the cookbook is now now available for pre-order, and uh, with some special, I hate doing this shit because it sounds so commercial, but special limited time pre-order pricing, 20% off, actually. So if you use the code EM20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off of the, of the book, and you can get it at tofuhoundpress.com slash I sell three. Okay, tofuhoundpress.com slash I sell three. Dino's book, 20% off of the cover price of seventeen ninety five. If you order now, it'll ship by the end of April. Uh, but enough of that kind of commercial corporate bullshit. Let's move into some of the stuff following up from last week. Okay. I know last week's show was a departure for many of you. Yeah, and I think a lot of people like the departure. Yeah, of course, some did not, but... Well, yeah, but I mean, the feedback from that show actually was way beyond what we expected. Yeah. And I want to thank everyone who's written to us or said nice things about it on the, on the forums because... It was a weird show for me to do. I, I don't I don't like to talk about my own health issues for a variety of reasons. And um I, I guess when we were talking about it, I thought I'll talk about it if I think it might hit or, you know, resonate with someone and it seems to have resonated with quite a lot of you. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, overall, I think it was a very positive thing, and hopefully it got you thinking a little bit, at least. Um, and I know that Vicento Molina's interview and Drina Burton's suggestions were all very helpful to a lot of people, so... Absolutely. And in case you missed it, if you didn't see in the show notes or in the forums or whatever, Drina has posted on her blog. Uh, she typed out what she read and then added some additional hints. Vive la vegan. Vive la vegan dot... Blogspot. Blogspot.com? Yes. Okay. So you can go there, and if you didn't you know, get a chance to scribble them all down, or if you want to look at them further... Go to her blog. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I, I guess a lot of the questions we got tended to be sort of like, what do you eat kinds of questions? Mm-hmm. And I'm still, I don't really want to go into that on the show in a huge way. I mean, no. maybe, maybe one day we could do another show n- n- not too far off or for subscribers, we could do a kind of follow up on what we eat, like a day of what we eat. I, yeah, it's I just a little think it'd be boring. really boring. Yeah, but we did type out some of it on the forum. So if you go check out the podcast thread, it's linked through our, our main website. So. And a, a, a recent question we got from Kitty Veg, actually the the vocalist on our theme song, hmm. uh, she was asking, "Do you eat nuts?" <laughs> nuts. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, uh, e- yes. Yeah. <laughs> it would be the answer to that. I eat nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. Um, I don't eat a lot of them though. No, but we don't uh, eat nut butters either because they're concentrated. That's right. So, but we do eat handfuls of almonds. Uh, walnuts. Walnuts. I eat walnuts in things. I eat some sunflower seeds, but they're not a nut. Uh, th- that's mostly it. Walnuts and almonds. That's really it, isn't that's really it? Pretty much it. Uh, cashews occasionally. Oh yeah, but very, very rarely. Yeah, we haven't had those in weeks. No. So, um, but that's about it. Um, so we eat them as a snack and in cereal and muesli and all that kind of stuff. Actually, we don't eat cereal, but oatmeal and muesli. Yeah, if I put them in my muesli, mm-hmm, that kind of thing. So yeah, I do eat nuts. Um, <laughs> another question that we got, and it was a part of a longer question, but I thought it was interesting to talk about because it related to. Shit, do I have that printout here? Did I lose the printout? Mother 
<laughs> I went to the trouble of printing the damn thing out. Now I can't find it. Anyway, the question was basically... Um, two pages here. No, that's not uh, it either. Keep talking. Okay. Uh, well, I think the, what you're talking about... It. Okay, I, you got it. Okay, I'll just go with it. Someone basically wrote it and said, you know, um, we eat pretty well in general... And I'm, I'm just wondering, do you think that a couple like vegan Oreos a day makes a difference? Do you think that makes a big difference? And initially I would uh, last before all this shit went down with me, I would think no. But now I think yes. And actually, this is covered really well in a book that's called Mindless Eating mm -hmm. by Brian Wansink. I think is his mm -hmm. name. He is a professor at Cornell. Interesting book because it talks about these little places in our diet where we can find these kinds of extra calories when we're not looking for them. And I think the the... I just took the example of Numino's and because I don't really know. I'm sure there are other vegan Oreos, but those are the ones I'm familiar with. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're all pretty close. Yeah. And so I, I looked at Numino's and I thought, okay, well, let's see. What does three Oreos, three Numino's a day do for you? Oreos are vegan too, aren't they, supposedly? I think now they are. It varies. Like some older formulations had whey in them, but right. now I think most of them are. Yeah. So anyway, if we look at Numino's, um, it, the product description says a creme-filled wafer cookie <laughs> um the ingredients aren't so aren't so hot really uh unbleached flour organic unbleached flour organic sugar powdered sugar organic palm oil canola oil organic cocoa cocoa uh organic cocoa and cocoa organic unsweetened chocolate natural flavor salt sodium bicarbonate and soy less 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 than like a thin anyway um those are the ingredients but what's interesting about it is is that two cookies is 130 calories 4.5 grams of fat and uh you know, 10 grams of sugar, 20 grams of carbohydrates, all that stuff. To, get, to cut to the chase here, three cookies. If you eat three cookies a day, it's 195 calories a day. So if you were to eat that every single day, and most people wouldn't, but let's just say for the sake of the argument, mm -hmm. you consume three cookies a day. That's 21 cookies a week, which is 1,365 calories in a week of cookies. If you do that for a month, that's 5,460 calories. Now, how many calories in a pound? 3,500. Okay, so that's one month. You've already consumed one pound, mm -hmm. right? You will have gained a pound. Well, you will... Have, pound and a half. Yeah, almost. you will have taken uh -huh. in more than a pound of extra calories. Now, yeah. whether you're exercising to burn those calories off or not is a different matter, but you're taking in all those extra calories, right? Mm -hmm. If you do that over a year, and let's, just, let's assume you're eating three Oreos every single day for a year, possible, probably a little out there, but possible... Uh, that is 65,620 calories or 18.7 pounds. So if you were to do that every day for a year, taking, let's just say every day for a year, you took in 200 extra calories. Maybe it's not, uh, maybe it's not Oreos. Maybe it's some other shit. I don't know what, but if you were to do that every day for a year, you could gain 20 pounds in that year mm -hmm. or 19 pounds in that one year. So that's a stone and some for, <laughs> 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 right? Yeah. So um, I just thought I would try to sound all cool with people on the other side of the pond you know <laughs> hooking up with some of that uk slang well uh not slang it's not slang it's a uh, everyday right it's vocab yeah <laughs> it's everyday vocab <laughs> For um that. but but not anyway the point is is that yes these little things can make a big difference yeah and i think that really illustrates the point we we're trying to make last week which is the sometimes food can really add up <laughs> they, can, they can indeed um and also goes along with what we were saying about how you don't necessarily think you're eating all that bad but the, the saturated fat and white flour that you're eating there that's the totally devoid of nutrient flour is digested. that means is yeah. yeah you're digested and then does bad things to your body the saturated fat those are the two things combined in one item that makes cholesterol go up and um and i think at the point i was trying to make on the forums a lot was then then you're not eating things that are good for you you're not right. eating the, the whole foods that would provide great nutrients for you so like fruit mm -hmm. so so yeah i think it's a, so it's kind it's of really, a double whammy yeah, exactly and uh, like I said, that mindless eating book really does cover this kind of stuff really well because, you know, who thinks three cookies is a lot? Three Oreos. Like, right, throughout deal. a day, you eat one after breakfast, you eat one, two after dinner. You yeah. Know, you don't think of it. Three Oreos is not a big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could eat three Oreos like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like that, whatever. It's not, it's nothing big. But if you do that regularly enough, it can really add up. Mm -hmm. So that's one point I think is important for us to remember is, and you're right about the sometimes food. It becomes more often than sometimes. Mm -hmm. So um, what else do we have to talk about from, from the show last week? Um, well, we got some, oh, you had, you just read a new book that you wanted to, you talk about a point oh, that you read in there. Someone, um, I, I think Joanne on the forums mm -hmm. had recommended that I check out, um, Brendan Brazier, Brendan Brazier's book Thrive. Thrive yeah. So I start. I just started reading that, uh, interesting book actually, cause he talks, he, he pushes this chlorella shit really hard and this maca shit really hard. And I don't really know what either are. I mean, it, 
he, he's going to talk about it later in the book. I'm only in the first 50 pages or so. But anyway, um, interestingly enough, he, he, may, he makes a point in the book that I think is really vital is that basically because the way that, you know, the, the way that we're always regenerating cells in our body, that you are literally made up of that which you have eaten in the prior year to when you exist, right? So what your body is made up of is what you are consuming. So if you're consuming fatty, junky, horrible, processed, chemically laden food, you're going to be consisting of those things and therefore not feeling as as, as optimal as you could. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a pretty powerful point. That is. And actually, a really good point as to why you don't want to eat meat either and dairy and eggs. I That's mean, true. You become a giant re- egg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're eating all of that. <laughs> That you know, saturated fat, cholesterol for health things, and then also I think you're just you're just eating the decaying flesh. It's yeah, not not what I want in my body. I agree with you. <laughs> but anyway, but it, Brendan Brazier is interesting because people don't think you know that you can be vegan or that you can consist on you know subsist on a whole foods diet and be an athlete. But he runs triathlons. He does ultra marathons. Yeah, so, he, he's yeah. a very active athlete mm-hmm. and uh, a professional athlete at that. Yeah. So he has this whole whole system which he. He promotes because he believes it is resulted in better performance from athletically. So it's an interesting book, though. Maybe we should try to get him on the show. That'd be cool. Yep. We should. We should. Um, so, all right. Yes. Yeah, so we also got a, a email and voicemail feedback we just wanted to lump together right now. Yeah. And I actually want to, I, I want to just again say thank you to everyone out there who has written to us about this or who has been in touch with us about this. It was overwhelming and it was cool because we did the show and we were like, ah. We weren't real sure about it, you know? Mm-hmm. That's how I felt. Yeah, I wasn't sure if people would like it or not. Or Yeah, I think some of our listeners didn't. Yeah. But, you know, it's not we can't please everyone <laughs> we all the time. No, that's for sure. Yeah, we <laughs> not that we ever really try. <laughs> no, we don't try. But the point is, is that I just want to thank everyone out there who's written to us. And we do try to respond to you. So um, we did it, We did get some emails and voicemails about this. And I, I uh, thought one of them would be, one of the emails would be interesting to read. Um, this one's from Tim. And I, Tim writes... I really enjoyed your health podcast. Two years ago, as a 307-pound diabetic, I declined an an ordered triple bypass in favor of a low-fat vegan diet, Dr. John McDougall style, and exercise. The result is a sustained 90-pound weight loss and from seven pills a day to one and no need for the operation. I started as a nutritional vegan, but under the influence of you two, Eric M., and even Bob Linden, I am coming to appreciate the impact on animal suffering in the environment as well. Thanks for and keep up your good work, Tim. Excellent. And I think that's so cool because it's so powerful. I mean, 307-pound diabetic, um, you know, was on the verge of getting a triple di- triple bypass yeah. and said, uh, no, I don't think so. I'm going to work and, and defeat this. And yeah. that's pretty cool. That is. You know, the Ornish diet, I mean, not a vegan diet necessarily, mm-hmm. but th- that's you see those same kinds of results from the Ornish diet as well. Oh, no, the dogs are starting to fight. Oh, no. Guys, they were being M. so good for a little while. Come on, Em. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. All right. So what else do we got? We have a voicemail. We have too. a voicemail also. It's related. Okay, let's hope the dogs don't uh, explode into a furious ball of craziness. All right. Here we go. Hey, Bob and Jenna. My name is Claire Gallant and I'm calling you from Halifax, Nova Scotia, where we currently have a blizzard raging and it's April the 7th. In any case, uh your podcast is totally badass awesome amazing uh first second time i listened to your podcast was yesterday with the vegan health show the first time was uh, about a year ago and uh you were playing vegan bands music from vegan bands and and one of them was mine so that was fun to listen to that but your health show yesterday was incredibly inspiring in fact it made me cry at one point when bob bob said I'm vegan because it saves lives, but the last life I expected it to save would be my own. Not crying a bad way, crying a, oh God, I can't believe it. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so endlessly thrilled all over again to be vegan. So that was amazing, and it really uh, was incredibly inspiring. But I'm calling with a question too. Uh, my partner and I have been vegan for uh, about a year, steadily, and uh, we've done all kinds of, you know, we've. We're we're, I'd say we're pretty educated, healthy vegans, but your your show just made me think. And and he's been living in a separate city at, uh, for a while, and he's thinks that he's really low in iron and uh, gasp protein probably too. And I just wondered if you have any suggestions for upping your iron intake and what you, what you, people can do about that, what vegans can do about that. Like what like you said, you wanted people to call and ask you what you eat for breakfast. I want to know what we eat for breakfast. 
I want to know what you eat for breakfast that helps you boost your iron or whatever you eat that helps you boost your iron during the day and how you uh, how you do that. So, yeah, that would be awesome. I'd love to know that. Um, well, thanks, Claire. Uh, thanks for the kind words about the show. I really appreciate it, and I'm happy that um, that it could do something for you. Yeah. And as for your question, um, I don't think you should assume that you're low on iron and protein unless you have a blood test that tells you that. Yeah. Because, um, you know, you can't really know. And I think it's a really, really, really hard to be low on protein unless you're completely malnourished. I, I think, I mean, I, I think it's a John Robbins thing, but basically his argument is that you're getting enough calories, mm-hmm. you're getting enough protein. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why... I, I guess I'm kind of curious as to why someone would think they were low on iron. Yeah. I mean, for a woman, that's a concern because they're bleeding once a month, right? Oh, Yeah, but even and I think it's even rarer than people assume. Yeah, but for men, uh, to my knowledge, iron isn't isn't really an issue on a, on a vegan diet. I, I don't really know that, you know, I'm not a nutritionist, but... That's true. Um, and if you're not sure, I mean, if you want to uh, make sure you're eating the right things, then... By all means, go contact a nutritionist. Absolutely. And, um, you know, have the test done. Yeah, exactly. Or, or just have your diet analyzed as you eat over a couple day period and you'll know mm-hmm. if you're getting enough iron and enough protein and enough whatever. Yeah. But basically the plant foods that do have iron, um, and I think Vice Santo talked a little bit about this uh, last week during our interview, and again, Becoming Vegan. If you ever have nutritional questions, Becoming Vegan is the book for you. Um, foods that have iron include uh, beans, dark green leafy vegetables, uh, tofu and soy, um, whole grains. So that's, again, not the white flowers, but the whole actual grain. Um, and th- things like apricots, blackstrap molasses has a lot of iron for some reason. <laughs> um, so these kinds of things, if you eat in your diet, beans and greens, beans and greens. Yeah. <laughs> if you eat beans and greens, you're getting protein, you're getting iron, you're getting all kinds of wonderful vitamins. Well, so. just to give you an example, uh, I have my summary here from Vasanto that I was just looking at. And my daily requirement of iron, my recommended daily requirement for a person my height and weight and all that is 8 milligrams. MG, I guess that's milligrams, right? 8 milligrams. Mm-hmm. Seems like a lot. Uh, in any case, you know, during this, during this day I ate... Uh, I ate a salad, I ate some steamed broccoli, I had some beans, some cauliflower, some lentils, tomatoes, onions, celery, um, some popcorn, soy milk, things like that. And, you know, just a a variety of those things, not not a ton of them. And during that day, I had uh, 29.12 grams, milligrams of iron, 364% of my daily requirement. And I wasn't even thinking about it. So I was really just eating broccoli. I mean, I could literally go down the page and tell you everything I ate that day because it's sitting here, and, and how much of it I ate. Um, but it, it, it's nothing all that exotic, right? It, um, you know, soy milk, like I said, broccoli, just really straightforward stuff. So I think the key is just eating a variety of things, and that's how you get plenty of iron. Um, yeah, and if he's thinking he's, I mean, we're not obviously not doctors or nutritionists, but um, if he's thinking he's low on iron because he's tired, there's probably other reasons for it, maybe stress, work, uh, it could be anything. lack of sleep. It could be anything. It could be eating too much processed stuff that makes you more tired too. So, it, but again, who knows? I, I can't. I right. can't <laughs> recommend enough that yeah. if you have if you have the disposable income and you are worried or concerned about your diet, that you consult with a nutritionist like Vasanto. Mm-hmm. You know, someone who's cool with being vegan. Um, my consultation with her was very useful. Like I said, I, I have this like booklet full of information about my diet over three days that I was just able to look at really quickly and tell you. So. I don't know what to tell you to eat, to eat iron to get a lot of iron, but those things I ate and had no problem achieving my iron for the day. Yeah. So I don't think iron is a huge issue for. No, as long as you're eating a well-rounded whole foods diet, you yep. get everything you need. Absolutely. Except B12, in which case you have to take a supplement. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so that's uh, I think mostly what we learned. So. Yep. So what else, Jenna? Um, I think that's all in terms of our follow-up from the health show. Um, I'm sure we'll have more of this as we come along. Yeah, exactly. And as for what I eat for breakfast, I eat a muesli. I just want to, everybody keeps asking me about breakfast. <laughs> That's because I posed the question last About week. breakfast? <laughs> yeah. Well, for breakfast, the mo- the thing I eat probably most days is muesli. And it's like a little bit of oat bran, um, some thick cut oats, sunflower seeds, some a small number of chopped walnuts, raisins. Uh, what else is in there? A grated apple. Mm-hmm. Am I missing? Soy milk and water. Soy milk and water. Mm -hmm. And that's really about it. So, and I really like that. It's filling, it's hearty, 
and it's high fiber. So, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing we definitely do not have a problem getting is fiber. God no. So God no. We actually have that. Uh, I I'm vegan and I poop three times a day sticker from Food Fight in our bathroom, yeah. right over the toilet, <laughs> right over the the right over the the, the toilet called? paper the holder. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> toilet paper holder. So non vegans come to our house and they're like, oh really? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but anyway, Claire, um, thanks for the for the comments on the show. And only twice in a year. I mean, like, come on, man. No, not a year. It's been what eight months or seven mm. months, dude. We need to get you listening more than twice. Yeah, really. Come there on. There are a lot of other good shows out there. We do compelling radio like this all the time. Just ask our <laughs> listeners. So, yeah. Just well, I don't know if we do it that compelling, but it sounds good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so let's move on because okay. um, I you know we need to just move on. Okay, you got some clips to play and some things to talk about. I do. I saw this on the forums. Uh, the, I, I thought this was kind of interesting because I, I mentioned last week on the show that I've been listening to the back episodes of the Satisfy the Mind podcast. And on one of those back episodes, the host, your host, as he calls himself, talked about how um, Bill Frist uh, used to go out when he was in medical school. This is really horrible. And uh, by the way, Bill Frist is, um, well, he's a U.S. senator from Tennessee, right? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Wasn't he the House Majority Leader? He was for a I'm, while. House? Senate. Senate. Senate, Senate Majority Leader? He would be a Senate Majority <laughs> wow, Leader if he's yeah, a senator. Great. <laughs> yeah. I'm up on politics. Anyway, <laughs> he was a Majority Leader, was he not? Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll get all these things telling us that we're <laughs> stupid. Uh, I'm an anarchist. I don't fucking care about government. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do care about government. I just want it to go away. Um, and not in the way that libertarians do. <laughs> in a very different way but anyway bill frist um a senator from tennessee what he would do in the 1970s when he was at harvard medical school uh and he documented this himself in his own 1989 book called transplant and in the 1970s he would go to the spca and adopt kittens keep them as pets for a little while and then operate on them like he would do operations on them to hone his skills so he says here, um, let's see, uh, he, he says, I treat them as pets for a few days and then I carted them off to the lab to die. And I was totally schizoid about the entire matter. By day, I was little Billy, little, little Billy Frist, the boy who lived on Bowling Avenue in Nashville and had decided to become a doctor because of his gentle father and a dog named Scratchy. By night, I was Dr. William Harrison Frist, future cardiothoracic surgeon who was not going to let a few sentiments about cute furry little creatures stand in the way of his career. In short, I was going a little crazy. And he goes on to describe his his, uh, his experiments, and he says, It can even be beautiful and thrilling work, as I discovered that day in the lab when I first saw the wonderful workings of a dog's heart. I spent days and nights on end in the lab, taking the hearts out of cats, dissecting each heart, suspending a strip of tiny muscle that attaches the mitral, mitral, I guess, the valve to the inner wall of the cat heart and recording the effects of various medicines I added to the bath surrounding the muscle. I lost my supply of cats, he, he goes on to say. <laughs> I only had six weeks to complete my project before I resumed my clinical rotations. Desperate, obsessed with my work, I visited the various animal shelters in the Boston suburbs collecting cats. It was a heinous and dishonest thing to do. And indeed it was. Actually, this made me think of someone. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Chianti. Yeah, that's really sadistic. It is pretty sadistic. And, um, you know, it completely fraudulent. The S- the uh ASPCA says probably illegal as well. So Frist, Republican. Um, I- I'm not trying to make any generalizations here. I'm just <laughs> I'm just putting the information out there for you to decide. You know, you can think whatever you want. You, I'm just providing you with some with some information. I'm not saying that this suggests a trend. I'm just saying, you know, here are some examples that I find troubling. So Bill Frist um, apparently was involved in that. And then on the forums, someone had. Where the fuck is it? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I, someone had posted this. Sorry, I was looking for the clip. Okay. <laughs> um, someone had posted this 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 clip of Carl Rove at what looked like a Republican fundraiser dinner. Um, you know, a lot of tuxedos, and they had the comedians there. They had one of the guys from um, whose line is in anyway? Uh, Colin, I think his name's Colin. Any bald guy? Hmm, they're all bald on that show, aren't they? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. I, I, I hate that show. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I mean, I can't fuck. I just can't. Call him the Canadian guy? He's yeah. on the Canadian shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. That guy. The I Canadian guy. Yeah. yeah, he's also on like, uh, I yeah, think I've seen him on the on, Air Force. Is that it? Where is it? it? That, where is it the, uh, this, what is that show with this 
about the 20 minute news the, the, what, <laughs> this oh, hour is this 20, hour is 20 yeah. minutes 20 so minutes, 22 so. Dude, dude. Ah, <laughs> well we get yeah. cbc and <laughs> we watch it every so often yeah. and not often enough to know what all the shows are called yeah. uh but anyway he was there and they so they had these comedians doing this little stand-up at this at this uh dinner and they had carl rove up and the president was there and everything but carl rove um for any of you who are not familiar with american u.s american u.s in politics <laughs> uh architect of of the president's plan to overthrow the world essentially you know pr man. he's the evil henchman he is uh actually bush calls him turd blossom mm, but you know great <laughs> all right here's the little clip so i'll just let this roll what do you like to do for fun when you're not working when, when you, do you have any hobbies by the way the guy is the guy who's talking right now is a comedian trying to roast rove a little bit so just so you know the back and forth here i don't know if i made that clear do you have any hobbies I like to go home, um, get a drink, generally of a non-alcoholic nature since I don't drink, and um, then tear the tops off of small animals. Tear the tops off small animals. Actually, yeah, they're so better when they're topless, aren't they? Yeah, okay. He- headless. Okay, so you like to rip the heads off of... This is like Silence of the Lambs, isn't it? This is like... Uh, okay, so uh, but do, do you actually have any hobbies that uh, you can... T- you know, do you have any collections? I readily admit... That I am a practicing philatelist. Oh, a practicing right. philatelist. philatelist. I think that has to do with stamps. stamps. God, I hope it's stamps. Because <laughs> the first thing that popped in my mind wasn't stamps. Uh, so you have a stamp collection? Sort of. Sort of. All right. Well, he has any, envelopes. Uh, any very rare stamps? No. Okay. So you just take stamps, like from letters? Or. Yeah. Okay. Brad? Wow. Uh, you might want to try the booze. Hey, uh, aside, aside, aside from collecting stamps, uh, what, any, any other little fascinating tidbits of your life, besides obviously what you do uh, in the world of politics, that uh, you could illuminate for us? I hunt quail. You hunt quail. All right. Uh, so you like to go hunting. And uh, do you fish or any, any other things? Snowmobiling? Downhill skiing? No, just ripping the tops off small animals. Stamps. You ever, like, just rip a head off a squirrel and then put a bunch of stamps on it and mail it to yourself? <laughs> okay. Uh, probably not. Uh, okay, well, I think we've really learned... A little... It is going downhill, but it's, it's going to get even better. Uh, uh, do you mind if I call you Carl? Is that okay? All right. Uh... Ooh. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> Okay, you know, so he was, he was obviously joking for well, the first part. Of course, he was trying to be funny, but, though. But yeah, but that's weird, man. Yeah, that is. Like, weird. who gets up and says, "Yeah, my hobby is going home and having an alcoholic drink and ripping the heads off of animals." <laughs> what? <laughs> He's a generally a non-alcoholic drink because he doesn't. Drink. <laughs> yeah. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. I'm just, I, I'm just saying. Uh, I don't know that there's a correlation between political party and the desire to destroy animals, you know, like in the way that serial killers do as they're in training. I'm not making that co- correlation. I'm not suggesting that that connection. I'm just putting the facts out there for you, our dear listeners, to make these decisions on your own. Um, you know, killing small animals and running a war that's killed 650,000 people in Iraq. No relationship there. No, no. But you know what? You know. You know, the Democrats, though, they're even worse. So because because they let it all happen and don't give a shit. Well, now now they're trying to fix it all. Right. Right. (laughs) Whatever. But anyway. um, But yeah, the whole hunting quail thing, too. It's interesting. Dick Cheney, too. Yeah. I mean, you know, the hunting quail thing. What what is that? That is hunting quail. But it's a sport. (laughs) Actually, I was behind a truck the other day. Vote your sport on it with an NRA sticker. I was like, God, I would would try them (laughs) off the road. Um what was I going to say? Oh crap! Well, most quail hunting is oh, canned hunt. Exactly. That's what so I was yeah, say. you're canned hunt. you're shooting at all these quail that are put there for you to shoot at, and that it had never been in the wild, and it's yeah, yeah, that's a sport. That's a sport. So anyway, just uh, thought I put that out there. It's just an association I happen to notice. <laughs> I don't know. Well, it, I don't think it's an association. Mm-hmm. I I just think that it's a coincidence. Mm-hmm. A, a eerie, strange coincidence. Mm-hmm. That many people prominent in the Republican Party are into fucking with animals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Okay, let's move on. All right. Uh, I don't have the email theme song in uh, our new board. Oh, no. So, um, can I, I can play something else. Happy meat. <laughs> no. Can, can we just decide in, in the tradition of semiotics that we all, that that now means that we will move on to emails? Okay, until you get it into the new soundboard. Yeah, I just forgot. So, okay. Let's talk about some emails. All right. Time you have them all. Again. I'm trying to find okay. one to give you. <laughs> Let's go with the short one first. All right. All right. So someone writes and says, Corey writes and says, I have a simple question for y'all. And she does write, y'all. Uh, I'm, am I a vegan? Am I a vegan or am I vegan? I feel silly when telling people about my veganism because I don't know which is correct. So she wants to know when you say, I am, when you, when you identify yourself as a person who abstains from all animal products for ethical reasons, do you say, I am a vegan? Or I am vegan. No, I am a vegan or I'm I'm vegan. The A, the article yeah, is the problem. Yeah, yes, yes. Is it a noun or is it an adjective? Yeah. Uh, I think it's both. I usually say I'm a vegan. I'm a vegan. I'm vegan. Um, no, it, it, it depends. I don't know. It depends, yeah. I say both, I think. Someone's like, here, will you eat this hot dog? I'm like, no, I'm vegan. So. Yeah. I think you're both vegan and a vegan. <sighs> so, yeah. I my response was beats me. I think they're both fine. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more of a matter of personal preference. I think it is too. If you have a personal preference about whether you are a vegan or vegan, let us know. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Okay, this one's from Kayla. Uh, hey, Bob and Jenna. As a vegan, I may be a little biased, but I find this whole low carb diet a bit odd. I had already known about it for a while, but really touched a nerve of a scroll vacation when I was home watching a low carb cooking show with my dad. The host was making low carb sandwiches that would help you lose weight. This is how he made them. First, he took two slices of low carb bread, which I figured was okay. Then he took some chicken skin and cooked it in a pan Ew. to get the juices out. Then he cooked up a variety of chicken livers. The chicken livers and the greasy fat from the chicken skin were blended together to make some sort of spready paste. This got caked on the bread. Then about three inches each of turkey, roast beef, and cheese were added to the sandwich, on top, which topped off with hard-boiled eggs. In fact, the only veggies on the sandwich was the cup of mayo drowned coleslaw Ew. that was slathered on. Call me vegan crazy, but somehow the sandwich and the word diet don't seem to go together. In fact, the host seemed to have some trouble breathing during the show, no matter how much <laughs> weight he lost. Moral of the story, the people on Atkins diet who find vegans insane for not eating animal products. How do you get your protein? But find it totally safe to fill their veins with animal fat will soon have some sort of rare heart disease and may be stuck on a gasp rice and vegetable diet. Mm. So letting you know that there may be some forced vegans who may be listening to your show soon. Lots of love from Connecticut and keep up the great work. Yeah, I mean, fortunately, a lot of this stuff... Oh no, Molly's going to bark. Not again. There's someone outside. No. They'd only heard him bark. They haven't heard him bark twice. <laughs> um, he Anyway, we've already had to stop the show once because yes. Molly went bonkers. <laughs> uh, I lost my train of thought. The whole about? Atkins thing. Oh, well, fortunately, it's kind of in repose now. It's going down. Yes, the it is. It is. I think a lot had to do with the with the Atkins Corporation going belly up and yeah. Atkins himself dying. dying. Yeah. You know, <laughs> saying that he didn't, you know, everyone says he didn't die of high cholesterol and all that. But of course he did. So, you know, all that stuff, I think, bodes well for, mm -hmm. the, for the downfall of Atkins. But still, there there are still these low carb people out there. Um, it, it's a, It's insane to me. I know. I hate it when you go to a restaurant and you hear someone at the next table, well, I'm eating low carb, so I can't have this. No, I'm on Atkins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, that drives me insane. Yes. Because what they'll, but I've noticed this at restaurants mm -hmm. we've been to. I'll say to someone, you know, I can't consume any animal products. I'm wondering if you could do X, Y, or Z for me mm -hmm. very nicely. And they'll be like, no, no, you know, we really can't. We can't do that. They're like a little more strident, mm -hmm. right? But then you have some asshole at the next table who's like, I'm on Atkins and I need X, Y, and Z. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, no problem. Yeah, right. You know, I'm like, <laughs> fuck you. You're going to help this Atkins loving asshole eat and I'm going to starve because you think Atkins is some kind of valid way of having a diet, <laughs> whereas my choice is not being respected because you're a fuck up? That's how it goes. <sighs> That's what I have to say. What? No, then. <laughs> All right. Next Go email. Oh, have I it. have it. Right. This one is from Jesse. Um, Jesse says, hey, Bob and Jen, I'm not sure if this is the right place to send this, but I was reading Glamour this morning. Hey, I need my girly fix and came across a few things I thought you, you might get a kick out of or a few things that will make you really angry. Anyway, in this month's Glamour, they have an entire section of, quote, the 10 easiest things you can do to help the planet, unquote. 
Of course, there was no mention of vegetarianism, let alone veganism, but they did advise readers to, quote, choose organic grass-fed beef and to, quote, pick milk that comes from a local dairy. However, in a surprising slice of honesty on the next page, they inform us that free-range chickens probably didn't have fresh fresh air-filled exercise you're picturing, advising us instead to buy organic eggs. I guess organic hens have awesome lives, according to Glamour. Would it really be that horrible to just say, consider not eating eggs? I should also note they spent a good a, a good few pages raving about the Prius. <laughs> well, none of this none of this is all that shocking. But in the same article, they didn't they did an interview with Martha Stewart asking her what ten things she could not live without. Eggs made the list because they are quote the perfect food. The perfect food? What? Mucousy, cholesterol ridden cruelty pods that come out of another animal's <laughs> vajayj. <laughs> vajayj, I like that. <laughs> vag. Yeah, vag. Um, <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, what the hell are these people on? I almost choked on my egg-free breakfast. Anyway, just wanted to share my pain with some people who would understand. Thanks for the podcast, guys. I didn't discover it until episode 59 or so. Where have you been, Jesse? <laughs> so I've been working through the archives, and it's all great stuff. Keep it up. Cool. So, that is amazingly that. refreshing. Yeah, perfect food if you're a developing chick and you need all the nutrients from the egg. And why would you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Why would you want to eat something that has come out of someone else's, you know? Yeah. Hoo-ha. <laughs> <laughs> we talked yeah. about this on the show before, too. Like, most people are disgusted. Humans who, who drink milk, uh-huh. dairy, uh-huh. you know, from cows, are disgusted by the idea of, like, grabbing the breast of a lactating woman, woman mm-hmm. a human woman, and mm-hmm. sucking it. Yeah. Right? They find that completely disgusting. But they'll go and literally drink the juice that comes out of a fucking herbivorous animal? What the hell? I know. And That's eat weird the menstrual product of a chicken. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. I like that sound. I'm really, I, I'm really into that. Yeah, but yeah, perfect foods. Yeah, you're right. Saturated fat and cholesterol bomb is what I call them. I like that. But the way that she described it was pretty. Funny it is too. funny. Let's see where was that? Mucusy cholesterol ridden cruelty free pods. Cruelty pods. Did I say cruelty free? I always say. Uh oh. <laughs> cruelty pods that come out of another animal's JJ. <laughs> That's awesome. That That's is good. brilliant. Uh, but and also as a side to that, um, I, we did notice that Time magazine recently had like the 50 things you can do to help the earth. And they actually did mention go vegetarian. Yeah, they said that was better than buying a Prius. Yeah. I know. I was surprised <laughs> I was by Holy that. shit. <laughs> like, I'm going to take this to work and show all of the people who listen to NPR, all the NPR <laughs> liberals at work. Hey, look, look. <laughs> yep. No, I'm just kidding around. Yeah, but I couldn't believe it actually made the list. It's amazing. I've long since given up trying to talk to anybody at work about anything that of course. deals with any of these issues. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. That's all our emails. Uh, now you have to pretend that you're hearing the voicemail theme. Jenna, do it. Sing. No. Okay. No. <laughs> you don't want to hear me sing. Actually, that's true. Uh-huh. Bob and Jenna show. <laughs> there you go. All right. Bob, 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 and Jenna. Woo. That's us. <laughs> that's the voice of Vegan Freak Radio. All right. Let's move on to the voicemails. Yes. Uh, we've got a couple this week to deal with. Um, well, not to deal with. That we're looking forward to talking about. Two of them, I would like to say very happily, came from our new MyChingo system over on the veganfreakradio.com webpage where you can go with your very own computer and a microphone and leave a message for us. Now, I would like to encourage this because the sound quality is significantly better, as you will hear. Hi, Bo and Jenna. This is Tijmetje. I'm vlogging Fiona on the forums, and I thought I would try this thing because well you said you'd not want to tried it before and I don't know I felt a bit sorry for you for bothering with putting it up and making things easy for we'll take the sympathy vote yes. for us and then no one uses it and um, so I'm trying it and I really hope it works and um, it's, it's really nice actually you can just record and stop it and re-record and whatever you hear that, everybody? It's really nice, actually. You can stop it and record and listen to yourself and see how you sound. And if you're overseas like she is, it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, that's right. The The joys of the internets. <laughs> the internets. The uh, internets. Um, uh, yeah, I don't actually have anything to say, but I just wanted to try it. Um, I wanted to try it last week because I have to be with my boyfriend to try it. Because uh, me, he actually has microphones and proper computers and all that. And, and, and a connection to the internet, which is very, very handy. And I love him for that, but, um, well, and other things. But um, I forgot last week, because, uh, last weekend, because, uh, I don't know, I just did. Um, hmm. You might have noticed I don't actually have anything to say or anything, like, useful to contribute and all that. Um, just 
saying I really like your show and I'm always very amused listening to it and I don't know it's fun being a freak or at least and if you know some other freaks um yeah so that's it really um love you bye <laughs> thanks <laughs> vlogging Fiona yeah we're not even going to attempt to pronounce your name I was your trying name. to tell Jenna that you had called and I I, I could I just couldn't say <laughs> I couldn't say no, it don't I, I'm really it. sorry I don't want to yeah. I'm not trying to make fun of you I no, just no, no. I can't I, I'm it, it's me I'm an American <laughs> <laughs> you know big slow moving a little stupid mm-hmm. American mm-hmm. I speak English. No, you speak American. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. No, uh, anyway, thank you for the call. You see, didn't that sound, all of you out there, didn't that sound very nice? It did. It sounded much better. Okay, next voicemail we have is from Chloe. Also, also through the little Java applet on our webpage at veganfreeradio.com. Hey guys, um, this is Chloe. Listen to that sound quality. I was just listening to your podcast in the car and it just, it really was one of the things that I really needed this week. Okay, I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and in case you've, like, never been here, it's basically an entire culture centered around barbecues, fried chicken, and NASCAR, and it pretty much sucks. Um, I'm from New York, so moving here was kind of a transition, to say the least. But, you know, when I first moved here, I was only vegetarian and started transitioning to vegan while living here, and... While I was viewed as a freak for not eating Bojangles chicken as a vegetarian and then moving over to vegan, it's it boggles the mind sometimes just how much I get looked down upon. Like, I'm in beauty school with a bunch of girls and every day at lunch I'm there with whatever I've made and I always get some kind of snide remark or some kind of comment about what I'm eating. And... Eventually, you know, every now and then I'll get the curious, you know, legitimately curious question. Well, oh, okay, you know, what are you eating versus, ew, what she's eating, you know, the whole difference there. And I just don't see why it's such a problem for some people. But, you know, in facing that each day and then, in, you know, listening to your podcast and having some of the friends that I do that are there to support me, you know, um, where I'll be moving to in California, it's just... It gives me a little bit of hope. Like tonight, for example, I was, you know, cooking up my lunch for the rest of the week. And as I'm cooking and, you know, going through my recipe book and, you know, reading, um, you know, How It All Vegan and The Garden of Vegan and those great cookbooks and um, my teeny book um, from Moby's Tea Shop in New York. Like, and just reading and listening to your podcast, it just reminds me that, you know, as much crap as I have to face every single day with people judging me just for how I eat versus who I am as a person or, you know, because I'm in beauty school, how I'm going to do hair, you know, it, it just doesn't seem fair sometimes. And I really don't understand that. But, you know, at the same token, I'm still very comfortable with my decision, even during these difficult times, because I'm reminded of the few people that I have been able to, um, touch and have been able to change, you know, My friend Jason, for example, has been vegetarian for two years now after me becoming vegan and moving to the state and getting to know him and getting to affect his life. Before I met him, you know, he was a hardcore bacon fan, you know, and now he won't even touch me and he's slowly been transitioning to vegan, but living with his parents, he's having a bit of a hard time. But if I know that I can affect one person like that, and stay so strong in my convictions, even living in an environment that I do in which, you know, everything is cooked in butter or fried, you know, I, I think I'll be okay. And just wanted to drop a line because I was just considering that and just sitting here with my dog Ziggy and was just thinking things over. So, uh, hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Chloe. That's awesome. It's really inspiring. It is. It is. I mean, it's difficult to be around people who, uh, are, stupid and who give you a lot of shit my advice is always just to say eat me just like that <laughs> or maybe like this eat me but i think um actually like tm chis tm chis tm anyway like uh flogging fiona's email a voicemail i i think you know it, basically it's good to be a freak in a way like you know if if that's what it means that you know every so often you have to put up with that shit if that if if the flip side of that is that you're doing positive things with your life hell it's worth it indeed 
That's what I think. And, you know, kudos to you for turning on your friend to veganism, getting him to go vegetarian, then vegan, leaving that bacon behind. <laughs> uh, and that's awesome. cool. And, you know, it's difficult to put up with that shit, but you're, you said you're going to be moving soon, so... Yeah, that's good. That's but, always I mean, plus. no matter where you are, you sound like you're a very great example of what, a, you know, being a vegan can be. And hanging in and, there. Yeah, exactly. And showing, you know, well, you know, okay, I'm going to get these silly comments, but this is what I got to do, and I got to do it. So you're all, yeah. do it. Good stuff. Yeah. So who am I doing next, Jenna? Uh, we have one from Lydia, I think. Okay. Hey, vegan freaks. My name is Lydia, and I've been listening to your show for a long time, and I love it, love it, love it. And I thought that I would share a story that happened to me today. Um, so, tomorrow's Easter, and it's also tax season, so since I'm at college far away, I've been home, or not home, <laughs> I've been on the phone with my mom all day yesterday, you know, whatever, money, money, it's icky, but she seemed all excited about this package that she sent me, and she kept reminding me and reminding me to go get it, so this morning, I went and got it, and what's in the package? All sorts of adorable vegan items, like, of the food that she sent me, she sent me uh, jelly beans that probably aren't vegan, but she included the ingredients so that I could check. Aw. And cool. she made me cookies, <laughs> vegan cookies, that are so bad and they're so crumbly and she didn't know what she was doing, but it's adorable. But she tried. <laughs> but she did that. And I just wanted to share my story because my mom has never exactly been down with the vegans. And she was pretty an- antagonistic in the beginning. <laughs> but now she's clearly come around and is making me adorable vegan food. And to all the vegans whose parents think you're crazy, it won't last forever. Someday they'll make you cookies. All right. Bye, vegan freaks. Love you guys. Bye. Excellent story. Thanks, Lydia. Yeah, I think it's really important to remember that, I mean, a lot of people are hesitant to go vegan all the way because they're afraid of the impact that it's going to have on their family. Yeah. And it, is, it might be rough at first because people are certainly aren't always accepting. But I think people more often than not come around. Of course, some people never accept it. But but I think I think your family, I mean, more often than not, they're going to realize that it's not just a fad, not just this thing you're going through. It's not like, I don't know, your little phase. It's actually something that's for real. And that's why it's important to hold fast to the principles of it because mm-hmm. The more that you waver in those principles, the more people are like, oh, it's just a fad. Right. Or, oh, well, you know, you ate this last time. Well, why don't you eat it this time? Exactly. So thanks for for sharing that story, Lydia. Okay, who now? Frip, 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 frippity do. Hello, this is Frippy. Um, I have a frequent caller to the show, by mm-hmm. the way. Mm-hmm. Yep. And Frippy, you can go back through the archives and find Frippy here yeah, and there she's in got the some voicemails. Good stories and good rants. Yep. Story. Okay because it involves ex-vegans and the local food craze. So I have this coffee shop right on the corner, and most of I'm pretty sure everything they make there is not vegan. And that's fine, you know. But they have coffee, and I had a headache this morning, and they're a two-minute walk away, so I walk to the coffee shop. And what I normally do is I get, they 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 don't say they have soy milk, so normally I just get the coffee in a larger cup, bring it home, put some soy milk in it. Well, anyhow, I was doing that, and then the girl, I just mentioned the girl that I get a larger cup because I take it home and put soy milk. So she's like, well, let me bust that out. So I was like, oh, cool, they have soy milk. So I was like, oh, great. Like, I didn't know you had soy milk. Well, now I might have to come here and get, like, a soy latte every once in a while. So then she says, are you vegan? And I said, yes, I am vegan. Yay. And she says, oh, me too. Well, I was for two years until I started working here, and I've been trying things like, you know, the pastries and the cakes, and I don't regret it. And I just wanted to wince and say, you know, and I was thinking like, well, yeah, you know, when I first moved here to this neighborhood, I wasn't vegan, and I tried some of the cakes, and they were good, but I mean, you know, I don't care anymore. But then she's like, are you vegan for health reasons? And I shook, I just shook my head and like, no, no, you know. Because, you know, I have a headache, too, so I didn't feel like going all into it, but, you know, I figured I just said no, and that was the obvious. I was vegan for the other reason. And then she says, well, you know, you should know that all of our our stuff is locally produced, and we're just a small shop, and we just get it from small farms. And I just, this is where I lost it. I was just like, I don't care. (laughs) You know, I don't care if the chickens live across the street. I don't care if they get to listen to lovely, 
yawny while they lay. Yeah, I don't care if the I don't care if the chickens get to lay their eggs on velvet pillows. I don't care if the chicken signed waivers saying that they know where their eggs are going and they happily <laughs> sign them away. Although yawny. May, maybe if I knew that was legit, I might 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 if I was starving to death. But no, really, I don't care if it's local. I don't care how how close the cruelty is to home. I don't care how nice you paint a picture of, you know, yeah, they, they give the cows hand jobs after they milk them. <laughs> oh, boy, yay. The cows are satisfied and post-orgasmic, and we're all happy. It's just like the local food thing. It's like, I don't know. People are just like, well, it's local cruelty. It's in your own backyard, so it's it's cool. It's ethical. So that's why lately, every time I hear people talk about local food, I just I'm like, oh, fuck your local food. I don't care. Because <laughs> I mean, uh, isn't it in the name of local food? I mean, I don't know. Just, I don't even want to hear the words local food anymore. I just ah. So anyhow, that's my rant. Uh, vegans who are vegans, unless it's local, then it's then it's totally cool. And um, it's just a slippery slope because you know what I've been there. You know, it's just like I'm just gonna I'm just gonna eat organic, kind, cage free, blah de blah blah blah. And then the next thing you know, you just start saying, well, if I can eat, drink organic dairy, then just this once I'll drink non organic dairy. And um, and our local our local organic dairy Overweiss is owned by a right wing homophobic racist asshole anyway. So. I mean, if you're a progressive, omni-progressive local food eater, you're just supporting a person you hate on another issue and giving them lots of money. I mean, he's a politician who's run on homophobic campaigns. So, anyhow, fuck ex vegans, fuck local food, blah, blah, blah. I better drink my coffee because I have a headache. It's for me again. I just had another thought right after I hung up. Um, a good thing I was just thinking of with the whole, but it's local, I mean, if a rape happens next door, is it more ethical? <laughs> if a murder takes place in, you know, on your block, is that better? I just, like, I just, maybe I should just remember that and just say that, because it's like, why is cruelty better when it's in your backyard? So, uh, right. I just had that one last bit of thing to add, and I am drinking my coffee now. Okay, bye. Thanks, Rippy. Absolutely. That's a good rant. <laughs> That's an excellent rant. I don't know what else I need to add to that. It's yeah, perfect. Really. The response was exactly what I would have responded. I don't know where. But it's great. Yeah. But the local food stuff, I mean, yeah, that's the craze. Yeah, and, and I think Michael Pollan has a lot to do with that. I think so, too. And I think local food is wise. But I, Well, yeah, for vegetables. But again, <laughs> Frippy raises a great point. Because it's local does not mean that it is not cruel. No, does not mean that it is no, not wrong. Exactly. And people think that gives them a pass. Like, that's... There's the one thing our, our co-op sells is that really annoys me. It's like all this local raised meat. And so people go there just to buy that. But, you know, it's not as bad as a co-op in Ithaca where they no. actually have a case full of it now. Exactly. You know, and I don't need to go into another rant about this, but all it does is help to, you know, soothe the consciences mm -hmm. of people that would otherwise probably give this stuff up. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not into that. I'm not into happy meat, happy meat, happy, happy meat, meat. meat. <laughs> happy meat <laughs> i'm not into it no not at all not at all yes and local vegetables are good because they they don't need to get as far you know burning as much fossil fuel to get to your plate that's true and support local many fewer miles exactly yep. but so that works for vegetables it doesn't you're right it does not work for for animals it's still cruel it's still cruel it doesn't matter how far they had to travel it's, it's less cruel. cruel but it's still cruel it's still exploitation. It's still problematic. It's still exploitation. It's still using animals. And it's still them. leveraging the labor and or bodies of animals for the production of profit, which is problematic. What you said. Absolutely. Now we have one last. <laughs> Funny one. Did it beep? Yeah. Wait. Oh, okay. Hey, Bob and Jenna. It's Mike again. I just called you like a minute ago from Connecticut. I think I'm calling on a different number, but I just want to tell you it's my birthday on Friday. So play my message on the... On the podcast. Oh, and we're sad because we have no vegan friends. That was my girlfriend talking. We're your friends. Yes, we are. Her name's Rose. Wait, she wants to talk too. No, 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 I don't. We don't bite. We're really drunk because it's Easter and we don't like Easter because we don't want to eat turkey. <laughs> they tried to make us eat turkey and we said no and they were really mad. <laughs> we don't like turkey because... Turkey is not vegan. It's mean 
that they killed it. We don't like eating dead animals. I love you. We want vegan friends. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're your virtual vegan friends. We are. We're here to play your voice. Uh, but before we go on, I think we should, A, wish you a happy birthday and mm-hmm. play a little song for you. Ready? One, two, three, go. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. La, 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 la. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Come on. La, 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 la. Ta-da. That was good. Let's do a little poke up. Poke up birthday. I wish we had an accordion. Um, pa, pa, um, pa, pa, um, pa, 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 it's your birthday. Pa, 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 it's your birthday. Tell us how like a Mexican one. <laughs> la, 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 la. It's your birthday. It's your it's birthday. Your special day. It's your birthday. It's your special day. <laughs> Where to say? It's your birthday. It's over now because we don't know any more the words. Da 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 da. La 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 la. It's your birthday today. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> To you. We do some harmony. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Random things you find on the internet. That's right. That's from the internet archive. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Should I give the person? It, it's a funny happy birthday song by Hoops and Yo-Yo. So okay. congratulations. Happy birthday, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're totally having a good day, dude. Yeah. And uh, he he left a couple more <laughs> voicemails after that, which I didn't play. But anyway, apparently he's going to get to meet Dennis Kucinich, which is oh. pretty cool. And he, he invited us too, but you know it's kind of far. So Connecticut, in Connecticut, uh, yeah, it's pretty far. We're way upstate, so bummer. But thank you. But for thanks, the thought. yeah. If you're uh, far upstate, let us know. Yeah, we're way upstate New York, though. Right. Whenever we say we live in upstate New York, people are like, "Do you live in Buffalo?" I'm like, no, I do not live anywhere near Buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo is like. Four hours away. <laughs> Five hours away. <laughs> Toronto is closer. Yep. <sighs> I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> All right. Yes. So, moving so. right along. <laughs> well, we're all your vegan friends out here in virtual vegan land. Indeed. So, yeah. uh, okay. We're done with the voicemails, I uh-huh. think. Do we have any more? No, that's it. Okay, good. We're done with the voicemails. Okay. Uh, imagine I'm inserting a voicemail theme here. Okay. You have to sing it yourself. Okay. Good, good. good. All right. <laughs> Callers do make us happy and okay. they help us keep our sanity. Mm-hmm. And even if all they do is fucking complain about our profanity. Yes. <sighs> Put that number on your refrigerator door, 267 or use that little Java applet that Bob was talking about earlier. That's right. That's what real women need. <laughs> I love that sound. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going to have to go ahead and sort of disagree with you there. <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on. Okay. So, uh, last week, two weeks ago, some time ago, when Jenna was at work and I was home lounging around on my sabbatical, uh, Sarah Kramer and I sat down on the tele. Well, we, we sat down, but I sat down in upstate New York, somewhere near Buffalo. Because <laughs> <laughs> apparently everybody who lives in upstate New York lives in Buffalo. Uh-huh. Uh, I sat down on the telephone here and Sarah Kramer sat down on her telephone over on the west coast of Canada and we had a discussion. So here's what resulted. Hope you enjoy it and we'll be back when it's over. Okay, it is our great pleasure to have Sarah Kramer back on the show. If you don't know who Sarah Kramer is, you must have been living under a rock for however long (laughs) you've been a vegan for. Uh, Sarah Kramer is author, co-author of numerous vegan cookbooks, uh, La Dolce Vegan, How It All vegan or vegan or i always get confused in that title it's how it all began it's, we talked stupid. about this last time I it's know. a play on words <laughs> yeah i know uh what else garden of vegan garden of vegan yeah oh uh, there we go i'm a little scattered today i uh, i think i'm coming down with a head cold so i think that's partially why i'm a little a little spacey and maybe why i sound different anyway uh, welcome back to the show this is your second time on vegan freak radio and uh, it's so nice to have I'm- you on Oh, I'm so excited. It's so funny. I listen to you guys like well, every day when I work out. I put you on my little iPod and I listen to you guys every day. And I feel like I know you so well, <laughs> but yet we've only really met once. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I feel like you're like my friends. It's, uh, you guys are so, your show is so great. I'm so, so happy to be here. Oh, well, I'm glad we could give you something to do during your workouts. Um, I know. I, <laughs> winter... Well, it's... It's embarrassing because I'm on the treadmill or on the elliptical trainer or whatever, and I'm like laughing my guts out, <laughs> and uh, everyone's staring at me. But whatever. Awesome. Well, I'm glad we can make you laugh, and and uh, I don't know. I I ride a bike here in you know in the winter in the house, and I'm always looking for stuff to listen to because, man, I get so bored in the winter here and doing anything <laughs> that requires workout. 
So. I know. It's, re- it's really hard. You need stuff that keeps you motivated. And listening to you guys, just like, you know, it just makes the time pass so quickly, and, it, uh, and it's great. But you know what's really great to work out to is um, there's a band called Morningwood. I don't know mm. if you've heard them. No. But their album, the first, like, five or six songs is perfect for working out. Like, you got a couple songs for warming up, and then you got a couple really good songs that get you going and keep you through the, you know, get you through the hard part, and then a couple songs to, ha- to help you cool down. It's the greatest album ever. It's the greatest workout album ever. So the band is called Morningwood? Morningwood, yes. <laughs> Morningwood. <laughs> Sorry. I, yeah, they're a great band, and uh, they're fronted by this awesome female singer. They're, they're awesome. I, I saw them play down in LA, and they're, they're, they're so good. Excellent. I love them. I will check that out. So, um, so what's been going on with you lately? Uh, it's been a while since we've had you on the show and talked to you. Um, tell us a little bit about your life. <laughs> well, well, I think the last time I talked to you guys, I had just finished my big um, promotional book tour for La Dolce Vegan, and I think it was just sort of at the end of that. Yeah. Um, I'd been on, on tour for like four months or something, just sort of going all over North America. And um, since then, I've just sort of been taking some time off. I wanted to like recharge my creative batteries a little bit yeah. and um, just sort of put the books on the back burner for a while and just sort of concentrate on other stuff. There's been so much, there's so much stuff that I'm interested in in my life that I haven't been able to really pursue in the last 10 years just because the books take up so much time. So in particular, I've been really working on um, photography, which is something I've been doing since I was a, a kid, but just in the last year or whatever, I've been really focusing on it and I've and, um, been having a lot of fun with that. What kind of subject matter have you been have you been exploring in your photography? <laughs> well, I love taking pictures of um, my dog because <laughs> he's such a poser. But um, I also I'd, I've been working with a burlesque troupe here in Victoria called the Cheesecakes, nice. and I've um, been doing lots of burlesque and, and pinup photos, and, and that's been a lot of fun working with those girls. So yeah, it's been really great. And, and how does that? I mean, how how did you get involved with that? With the burlesque stuff? Yeah. Or just with photography? Well, why don't we go for both? Well, photog- I don't know. I've always been really an, an image. I've always been attracted to images. As a, as a kid, um, I was surrounded by... My parents were actors and uh, ran a theater. And so I was always surrounded by artists. You know, there's a lot of people working at the theater. Where I, you know, either people who were building stuff or sewing costumes or writing plays or, um, you know, shooting photos. And um, a friend of the family's named Bob Howard um, was also the photographer at the Globe Theater where my, that my parents ran. And his um, photographs are just amazing, and, and I was always really influenced by his images. In particular, he took a lot of pictures of my mom, mm-hmm. and when my mom passed away when I was 10, I, I have all his photos that he took of her, and, and so it was really great to have those to, to, to sort of reflect back. And, and, you know, he just was, did a really great job of capturing the spirit of my mom, so I feel like when I look at the pictures, I really see her. You know, like, they're not snapshots, they're sure. actual... Yeah, and so, um, yeah, ever since I was a kid, I would, I'd, you know, steal my dad's camera and take pictures, and, and then they finally gave me, like, a Polaroid camera, <laughs> I think, because they were sick of me using up all their film, <clears throat> and gave me a Polaroid camera, and that was so cool, because it's, like, instant gratification. You That's know, you, the best. It's almost like digital. It's like taking a digital picture. You take a picture, and, and a couple seconds later, you get to see what it looks like, and, and um, yeah, so I've been an inter- interested in photography my, my whole life, and then... Um, just this last year, I guess 2006, I started taking pictures of um, the Cheesecake Girls. And um, so they're really, you know, they're sexy and cheeky and, and fun. Um, but the thing that I really like about the Cheesecakes is that, the, you know, they're, they're all feminists and they're sort of a feminist um, agenda with the Cheesecakes where it's, you know, all ages, all body types, all that, you know, all that kind of thing. So I'm more than happy to, to help them promote that and help take pretty pictures of them. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it's nice that there's a you know, kind of acceptance agenda behind a lot of it, too. Well, I mean, it's not just, you know, I mean, it is about boobies and, and all that <laughs> stuff, but it's, it's also like, it's also just about, uh, you know, having fun and, sure. and celebrating the sexuality that everybody has and, and, and that, you know, all, you know, everybody, no matter what your body looks like, is, is sexy and, and um, that you can have a lot of fun with it and, and all that stuff. So. Well, that's cool. So you can, you can work it regardless of, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Work it. You can work, work it. Work it. <laughs> I can't work it. I I have nothing to work. I have no I have no boobs. Come on. Well, even if you don't have, oh, there's boylesque out there. I've I've seen. There's a guy down in L.A. called Bobby Burlesque. He does boylesque, and he's awesome. What does you boylesque do look like? What, sorry. What does boylesque look like? You know, it's the same as 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 burlesque, but it's with boys. Huh. So yeah, is, he's 
he's phenomenal. I mean, he does stuff with like ribbons and balloons and sparkles. It's quite a show. Oh, and then he gets naked. It's great. <laughs> that sounds like fun. So uh, maybe I'll give that a shot at some point. I uh, maybe when I finish my current book, I'll go there. Yeah, I'll give that. A, I, I need something. I mean, I know what you mean about books just taking it out of you, man. They just like it's just like a part of your soul being oh. ri- ripped out of you. <laughs> Totally. I don't think people realize how much work it is to write a book. I mean, you know, you, you make it look easy, and, and it's not. And you do. You spend, like, you know, when I'm writing a cookbook, I'm gone for a year. I mean, I, I, I'm hardly social. I, <clears throat> I give myself Wednesdays <laughs> to be social, and my, my friends will come over and we'll watch America's Next Top Model. Like, that's the only time I'm social. Because when you're self-employed and you don't have a boss, you know, giving you deadlines, you have to be really focused. And, um, and yeah, so yeah, writing the books, it's just like, it's, it was like, you know, every day, yeah. you know, six or seven recipes a day and then, and then the writing and then the dishes, oh my God, the dishes, <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah, it takes, takes a, up a lot of energy. I can imagine. I mean, I love it. I love, I love doing it, but, um, I needed a break. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, it's good to get a break because it lets you kind of recharge a little bit. So while you're on break, are you, are you doing any cooking, or do you just try to do like minimal stuff? Um, what kind? I mean, how does that work for you? Well, I've been we've been, have been really lazy lately, but you know, I really write the cookbooks for myself, for myself, especially with La Dolce Vegan, because all the recipes you can make in, um, you know, most of the recipes you can make in under thirty minutes, and nice. so. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot of time, you know, like in between, you know, taking photos and running the tattoo shop and, you know, all the, all the other stuff that I have in my life, I really don't have a lot of time to cook. So yeah, when I wrote La Dolce Vegan, it was with me in mind. So I could come home and be like, quick, I have potatoes, let's make potatoes and, and, you know, find a recipe that's, that's healthy and good. Mm-hmm. So these days, um, but, oh, sorry? sorry, I was just going to ask if you were doing any cooking anything good these days. Oh, well, my new addiction is potatoes. <laughs> no, my, my husband and I get into food ruts. I don't know if you guys do this, but, oh, you know, for a while it was like stir fries and, uh, you know, for a while it was like waffles. And, and now we're on to this new thing where it's really more of a breakfast meal, but we've had it three nights in a row. And then <laughs> I made it today for lunch as well. And uh, I feel kind of guilty because my husband's not here to eat it and he's going to be so mad. <laughs> but whatever. So um, what is it? So it's Okay, so I, I take new potatoes. And I chop them into quarters, and then I fry those up uh, with some tofu and a little bit of mustard seed and a little bit of curry powder oh, and good. a little bit of brag just to give it some liquid to, to help it cook. And then I put a lid on it and let it cook for about eight minutes or so until the new potatoes start to get soft. And then I turn the heat way up and I fry it until the, the everything starts to get really browned. And then I add chopped kale and frozen peas. I turn off the heat, put the lid on, get all my plates and stuff, and by the time I, I got my plates and forked out, the, the kale and the peas are ready. And then I, uh, you know, dish it out and top it with a little bit of um, grated vegan rella and a little bit of spicy flax oil and some salt and pepper, and then, oh, my God, it's so oh. good. I can't stop eating it. It's, I need an intervention. That sounds delicious, actually. You're going to be very hungry. <laughs> so when you say spicy flax oil, is that something that you make on your own? or cause it, <clears throat> No, you can buy it. I don't know what the brand is. You can buy it um, there, perhaps, but maybe not here in my redneck place where I live. It, it's made by Omega Nutrition. So they make oh. all different kinds of like flax oils and, and hemp oil, and they have a garlic chili flax oil that's so good. It's got enough spice in it that it gives... Um, just a little bit of heat to whatever, not a lot of heat, but a, a nice little bit of heat to whatever you add it to. Oh, that sounds so good. It is good. <laughs> so have you been doing uh, much traveling lately to for your book or for anything else like that? Yeah, I um, just got back from New York. I was invited to uh, go speak at Syracuse University, and I, I did a, like a cooking demo um, sort of lecture thing, and um, there's about 150 kids showed up, wow. and, and um, we just talked about veganism and my hair. And <laughs> your <laughs> so hair? questions about my hair. Why are there questions <laughs> about your hair? They, well, because I, I have gray hair. Yeah, I know. And because it's naturally curly, and so everyone always wants to know if it's really gray <laughs> and if I have a perm. <laughs> So okay. just to set the record straight, I've had gray hair since I was nine. <laughs> yes, I have gray hair. It's real. And it's naturally curly. I have a Jew fro. <laughs> All right. So you're, for the record, your hair is, in fact, not permed or dyed or any of that. Exactly. Okay. I am au naturel. But I actually just hacked it all off, and now I have, like, a super short haircut, and it's quite liberating. You know, I, I like having really short hair. Like, I cut my hair really short a couple of years ago, and... It's just, it's awesome. I don't have to really worry about it. 
I know. I mean, I, I was getting to the point with my hair where I was, like, blow-drying it for, like, 30 or 40 minutes because my hair is really thick. Like I said, like, it's Jew hair. Like, it's, like, really ethnic, curly, thick hair. And it takes me about 30 minutes to get it to get it dry enough that I can go outside and not freeze. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, enough. I'm <laughs> sick of it. So I had a Britney Spears moment, and I went to the hairdresser. I'm like, take it off. So, we, yeah, we chopped it all off, and it feels much better. Did you get a cheesy tattoo as well? <laughs> I'm covered in cheesy tattoos. <laughs> I mean, didn't she? No, get... I didn't. I should. I should. Uh, yeah, I should get something in honor of Brittany. I only knew. I only know about that because I was in a waiting room, and there was nothing there but these like People magazine and shit. I, I had no idea that she had this breakdown until I picked up this magazine and saw her shaved head and the little, uh, what was it like a little lips or something inside of her wrist? Yeah, little yeah, kiss lips or something. Yeah. yeah. I feel so sorry for her. I I really do. I'm just so sad for her, and I hope she can get it together. Because, man, like. Two babies in a one, you know, in a row, and it's like a child. You know, she's had a, been like super famous since she was a kid. Like that's got to be so hard when you're like 23 and have no idea who you are. And yeah, I mean, yeah. it would really mess your head up. I imagine. <laughs> Sorry. I I imagine it would really mess up your head. I can't. Yeah, I mean, her Michael Jackson. Like you know, it's just uh, it's got to be really. What you know, everyone around you is telling you that you're awesome, and and you still have no idea who you are, and it's just. Oh, yeah, I can't even imagine. So to get back to the whole stuff about veganism and away from kind of Brittany tabloids and Brittany and stuff. <laughs> when you when you give talks like the one you gave at Syracuse, you said it was kind of about veganism and how you got involved and stuff. Uh, what is going on? Are the dogs losing their mind? They're downstairs. I think someone is. Uh, there's probably a delivery person next door. Oh, okay. There, I'm just hoping they don't come upstairs because I'm upstairs and they're downstairs. And <laughs> if they, if they come up here, we just have to take a break. So okay. <laughs> and and start barking. But so when you go and give these talks at like Syracuse or other places like that, and you what I mean, how what what's like the basic things kinds of basic things do you talk about in those talks? Well, I'm not like a facts and figure kind of person. You know, I'm not like a Howard Lyman kind of speaker. Uh -huh. Usually I just sort of speak about my experiences um, as a vegan. And, and also, you know, for me, the book, with the books, it's, my goal is always just to uh, make veganism easier for people. Because, um, <clears throat> you know, once you've decided that you're vegan, then, you know, the process of actually applying it to your life and making it so that you're comfortable is sometimes can be difficult. So usually um, what I do is... Um, like with the demo, I just did a quick demo. Um, I did um, Renee's tomato soup cake, and it gives me an opportunity to talk about um, different ingredients and also about vegan baking and, and th you know things you have to watch out for, and and um, and also about my, you know my life's mission is to make sure that everyone who does baking has a, a standalone oven thermometer in their oven because mm -hmm. everybody's oven is off by a few degrees. So like my my oven's off by twenty five degrees, and that makes a big difference when you're baking. So. If you have a standalone oven thermometer, then um, you can adjust your oven, you know, accordingly, and your baking will, will always turn out. So that's my life's mission: is to tell everybody about that. And then, you know, after the demo, um, I, I usually just sort of do a, a, a Q and A. Um, you know, I usually give a brief history of, of how how it all began, sort of came to fruition, and then um, just talk a little bit about my my history with veganism and, and, um, and then just open the floor. And, you know, sometimes it can be like 15 minutes, depending on the crowd, but with, this crowd was great, and we had a, uh, you know, back and forth for probably over an hour. So um, it just, I, I just, I love talking to people and hearing about their experiences and, and, you know, answering questions like they're like, you know, my mom says this or, you know, just it's, it's the same kind of stuff you guys do with your, with your emails and your voicemails and all that stuff. Oh, cool. Well, that's, that's awesome, too, that you can go and do this stuff in person as well because, um, you know, you, you, you have a really, a, a kind of vibrant personality uh, in, in front of groups, and I think it works well for them. So that's really Well, cool. it's really, I mean, it's such a thrill for me to be able to fly all over um, and just meet people who are stoked on the books and stoked on what I do. And just, it's just, you know, because I do spend so much time alone <laughs> in my house writing the books. <laughs> And it and so it, you know knowing that there are actually people out there who enjoy what I'm doing, um, it's it's uh, it's the best part. Excellent. Um, so let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, what's going on at the tattoo shop? Anything good? Uh, 
Well, Jerry, um, just uh, just in the last uh, six months or so, has been really working on a, on a vegan ink. Nice. So now he's perfected a, a Jerry Kramer vegan ink. So um, I think we're one of the only shops in town that, ha- that uh, has vegan ink. So that's, that's been really exciting. And, um, yeah, the shop is just busy. We're just gearing up for a busy season. Summer is always really busy. So we're going to do a few renos before things start to get too crazy and I get to go paint the walls. So <laughs> glamorous. So, what a glamorous life I have. And then later I'm going to take biohazardous waste to the garbage dump. So, yeah. Ooh, biohazardous <laughs> yeah. waste. I, I love that stuff. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. No, but the, the, the shop's, shop's really great. I mean, it's, it's so great that I don't even actually have to be there very often. So, huh. I just, you know, I run in and I do the books and, and then I get to leave. So, it's great. Cool. It must be really tough to develop a, a tattoo ink as well. I mean, to get the consistencies right and the colors and all that stuff, that must be really difficult. Well, Jerry, I mean, he's, it's funny, he was a little overwhelmed at first, and then I was like, you just have to think about it like a recipe, so then I help, you know, I helped him, you just have to write it down. It's like creating a, uh, you know, like a new cake or a new soup or whatever, you just gotta write down what you're doing, and if you don't like it, you adjust it, and, and, uh, yeah, the inks he has now are really, really awesome. I think he's quite happy with them. Nice. So people can find yeah. out more, uh, more about what Jerry does and, and the shop you, you and Jerry work in at, uh, can you remind me of the URL? I forget off the top of my head now. Well, the shop is tattoozoo.net. Right. Or if you want to visit Jerry's website, it's jerrykramer.com. And, your um, and then if you want to see my photography, it's at sarahkramerphotography.com. Nice. And then if you want to know about the books, it's govegan.net. I mean, we got more URLs than I can, well, almost as many as you guys. You need, you need the URLs, though. It's all about, it's all about the internet these days. So. It, 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 the internet. Yep. It's all, it's all about, about the, it. All about the internet. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Maybe I shouldn't ask, but when might we expect another book project out of you? Oh, God, I don't know. Is that painful? My, I don't know. My publishers are really pressing me to write an, another one, and and, um, and and so are the readers. And, and I, I really, I told my publisher, I said, I need a year to just chill out and not do anything. And, and uh, he's like, so you'll have a new book in a year? And I'm like, no, I need a new, I need a year, and then I'll think about it. I really, I just need some time to sure. just chill. I mean, honestly, How It All Began came out in 99, um, and we had been working on it since 97. So it's been like 10 years of my life doing, doing these books, and um, I just really just need to do some other things right now. No, that's cool. Also, I, you know, I just don't know if I have anything left to say right now. <laughs> well, you know, we also don't want you to burn out, too, because I know how... Well, that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, and I kind of feel that a little bit. Like it's just, um, and the other thing too is, like, when we first wrote How It All Began, there wasn't a lot of resources at that time. I mean, there's a few vegan books out, but not not really a, a whole lot that was really wonderful. And now, I mean, forget about it. You go into the bookstore, and there's like vegan sections now, where you know you got all of Issa's books, and there's just there's such a, a fabulous. Uh, amount of uh, vegan cookbooks out there that I, I really don't feel like there's a niche to fill anymore. And um, so, yeah, I, uh, I like to think that maybe Tanya and I maybe open the door a little bit so that, that um, all, you know, all these all these books can can now succeed. And I, I think it's fantastic. I'm, I'm so proud of everybody. Excellent. Well, I'm, I'm glad there are all these books out there, too, because it's nice to be able to recommend them to people, and um, they all have different strengths, and they all kind of attend to different things. So I, I like that, totally. too, that there's like a, a variety. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and it, it's so funny in the uh, the last little while, like I think Issa's book came out around the same time that my book came out, and I had so many questions from, from uh, interviewers about, like, how do you feel about Issa being the new Sarah Kramer, and <laughs> are, you know, are you jealous of Issa's success? And I was just like, what the fuck are yeah. you talking about? Like, we're on the same team. I'm so proud of her and everything she's doing. So Issa and I, I think, we're planning on um, having a mud wrestling, or sorry, a uh, pudding, vegan pudding wrestling match, so... I got to start training for that because she could probably kick my ass. She's pretty scrappy. Yeah, she is, man. I I don't know where <laughs> where where are you going to get that much vegan pudding? That's a lot of vegan pudding you would need to do that. That's true. Maybe we'll have to get sponsors. I don't know. Good idea. I don't know. Good yeah. point. Well, whenever you're ready to come back to to make to writing cookbooks, we'll certainly be looking forward to to having cool. having those around. And because uh, we we like you know your books are kind of a staple in our house. So that's Good awesome. Stuff. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Well, anything else you want to mention before we? Uh, Call it quits here. Um, well, I want to know. Um, I want to know where you get all where your new announcer voices are from. Is that like <laughs> a friend of yours, or do, is it your voice and you've adjusted the sound? I I wish that were my voice. I mean, I I actually really 
I hate editing our show because I can't stand to listen to my own voice. I wonder how all these people out there do it all the time. <laughs> but um, no, that guy uh, randomly found him on the internet. I forget how. You know, I, I always read sites about podcasting, and I somehow saw he had a link for doing these, and they were really cheap. So I wrote to him and said, hey, would you say these following things for me? And it was like 30 bucks. It was great. That's so. awesome. Well, his voice is amazing. He sound I mean, he it's such an announcer voice, so it's just like Bob and Jenna. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Cool. We have more we have more in, you know, ready to roll too. We have ones that we haven't even played yet. So Oh, well that's exciting. <laughs> He's pretty cool. So he's a nice guy. He's just into supporting podcasting and he's, you know, got professional talent like that. But for podcasters, he's willing to do it real cheap. So it was good stuff. That's cool. That's awesome. Mm. You know what? I have a question for your listeners. Okay. So I love raw food. And I, and uh, when we were in New York, my husband and I went to New York after Syracuse. And, um, you know, we went to a couple of raw food restaurants. And, and I always find when I eat raw food, it just, I feel so amazing. Like it's, it's amazing food, but I find, because I'm kind of lazy, that I can't, I just, it's too difficult to make. Like, it's just, you have to plan ahead. You have to, like, you know, soak things for 24 hours. And I'm not, I don't cook like that. Like, I walk in the house and, you know, I'm more of an emotional eater. Like, what do I feel like? I feel like potatoes. So what I would like to know from your readers is, A, do they know have any good raw cookbook recommendations? B, can they send me some easy raw recipes that I can make myself and feel just as satisfied as I do when I eat at the restaurants in New York? And also, um, how do you open a coconut without killing yourself? That's a good one. That's because a- I bought this one uh, raw cookbook. I won't mention the name. But in every recipe, you need coconut water. And I'm like, coconut water? And so coconut water comes in young, fresh coconuts, which I can buy in Chinatown for fairly cheap. But how? I don't have a cleaver. <laughs> and I- I'm scared to open it. So and they're really Jerry drilled hot. it the other night, and we managed to get it out. But then, you know, all the fresh coconut inside ended up being wasted. So... If anybody has any tips for opening up coconuts, I, I would love to hear it. And they can get in touch with you how? Well, uh, Sarah at GoVegan.net, or um, you can give them my phone number. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, God. Don't, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I no, won't give out you your can, phone uh, You can get, uh, get a hold of me through the, through the website, uh, GoVegan.net. And, you know, if, you, if anyone uh, wants to send stuff to us first, we could, you know, we're more than happy to forward it on if you're in a hurry or whatever yeah. and don't remember and all that. We would love answers to that stuff, too, actually, because... I picked up a raw vegan cookbook that will also remain nameless. It looked great. The recipes are amazing and wonderful and fantastic, but they all look like they take forever. That's the thing. Like that's that. That's the thing is that they take. Yeah, exactly. And you have to make three other things before you can make this one dish. And it's uh, yeah. It's I find it really challenging and and really frustrating because because the food when I do go to raw restaurants, the food blows me away, and I'm just like I want to eat like this more, but. I just don't have the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who has it? like all the hours to do all that stuff? It's it's intense. Yeah, totally intense. So yeah. So there yeah. you go, there's listeners. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna say, there's also there's a great. I went to this great raw restaurant in um, Toronto as well, called I think it's called Live, and same like same thing. I just walked out of there like, oh man, I want to eat like this all the time, but it's just uh, yeah, it's too hard. It is hard, and you know, you, you live in a place where it wouldn't be hard for you to find the ingredients, but. Where I live, it's difficult sometimes to find decent produce. So that's another downside for oh, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be hard. Yeah. We can get produce, but usually it's like pretty pathetic. So it's it's best to cook it because it's just so sad. But summers, <laughs> summers are the best time. Yeah, well, so. I'm I'm pretty blessed here in, in Victoria. I mean, I can get pretty much anything. Cool. A, anytime, which is, which is really great. So there you go, listeners. You have your homework. You have your homework from Sarah. She wants to know. I can't wait to hear what they come up with. I'm so excited. I can't either. You have to share with me, though, because I want to know, too. Okay. So. Okay. I will. Okay. Well, there you go. So you have your, your raw homework, listeners. We want to know, and we, we need to know, and you need to be in touch with us. Okay? So, uh, cool. Anything else you want to add or ask? No. I think that's it. I mean, cool. I can't think of anything else. Well, it, I, I'm seriously, I got nothing going on. I mean, like today's housewife day, like I'm doing laundry and I'm going to sweep the floors and I'm sewing buttons on my husband's pants because he doesn't <laughs> know how to sew. And it's just, uh, I'm so glad you called and broke up the monotony. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you were on the show. And um, we always like to talk to you because, you know, you've got a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting, interesting things going on. And uh, it's, it's always good to hear what's up. So um, thanks again for being on the show. We much appreciate it. Thank you, and thank you for all the podcasts. You, your guys' hard work is just awesome, and I appreciate it. Oh, that means so much to us, and we really, we really appreciate that. So thank you.
Oh, let's make out. <laughs> we'll just oh, have no, a wait. love fest. Wait, but we can't. Um, we're both married. Anyway. Um, oh, right, right. I forgot. Yeah, but, you know, we can have a virtual, like, pat each other on the back fest. Okay, hugs. We'll give each other hugs. That's it. Platonic hugs. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks again. No problem. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. So, thanks for that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I missed talking with Sarah, but... Well, you were missed. I know. You, you were scheduled missed. when I was at work. Well, <laughs> it was some, some workshop. You I had know. I was there all day. Shit. So uh, anyway, a lot of things there. And be in touch with her. She had questions for you. Don't forget to do your homework and get in touch with Sarah to answer her questions. Because I want to know, too. I mean, I would actually like, you know, I would like to know. So get out there and answer those questions. Anyway, uh, I think... I think this is where we decide that the show is over. I think so. We need to wrap it up. We do indeed. So anyway, we want you to be in touch with us. Show at veganfreakradio.com. Leave us a voicemail on our site. Better quality. All you need is a microphone. Very simple to do. Or call us at 267-295-1944. Uh, I also want to thank people who, I, last week on the show, I mentioned my blog in a very pathetic way. And a, a number of you have come and said hi to me. And I try to get back to your sites and say hi to you. So I want to thank those of you who visited my blog because... I appreciate it. And I'll go and visit yours and we'll be friends. <laughs> How cute. Uh, I guess, is that all we have? I think so. And another reminder about Dino's book. If you're interested, go check out our website that we mentioned at the beginning of the show. Tokoonpress.com slash I sell three. And we hope to have Dino on the show next week. Yeah, he will be on the show. I will track him down and make him come on the show. All right. And don't forget, tofuonpress.com, the, the, the order, the, uh, blah, blah, blah. the coupon code is EM20. 20% off. Sorry, I don't mean to be so commercial, but <laughs> strictly commercial. Okay, bye. Bye. for many of you yeah, and i think a lot of people like the departure yeah, of course some did not but well yeah but i mean the feedback from that show actually was way beyond what we expected yeah and i want to thank everyone who's written to us or said nice things about it on the, on the forums because it was a weird show for me to do I, I don't i don't like to talk about my own health issues for a variety of reasons and um i, I guess when we were talking about it, i thought i'll talk about it if i think it might hit or you know resonate with someone and it seems to have resonated with quite a lot of you mm-hmm so, yeah, overall, I think it was a very positive thing, and hopefully it got you thinking a little bit, at least. Um, and I know that Vicento Molina's interview and Drina Burton's suggestions were all very helpful to a lot of people. So Absolutely. And in case you missed it, if you didn't see in the show notes or in the forums or whatever, Drina has posted on her blog. Uh, she typed out what she read and then added some additional hints. Vive la vegan. Vive la vegan. Blogspot. Blogspot.com? Yes. Okay. So you can go there, and if you didn't you know, get a chance to scribble them all down or if you want to look at them further... Go to her blog. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, I, I guess a lot of the questions we got tended to be sort of like, what do you eat kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. And I'm still, I don't really want to go into that on the show in a huge way. I mean, no. maybe, maybe one day we could do another show n not too far off or for subscribers we could do a kind of follow up on what we eat, like a day of what we eat. I, yeah, it's, it's just going to be boring. really boring. Yeah, but we did type out some of it on the forum. So if you go check out the podcast thread, it's linked through our, our main website. So. And a, a, a recent question we got from Kitty Veg, actually the the vocalist on our theme song, hmm. uh, she was asking, "Do you eat nuts?" <laughs> nuts. <laughs> um, uh, e yes. Yeah. <laughs> it would be the answer to that. Question. I eat nuts. <laughs> <laughs> no, we do. Um, I don't eat a lot of them though. No, but we don't uh, eat nut butters either because they're concentrated. That's right. So, but we do eat handfuls of almonds. Uh, walnuts. Walnuts. I eat walnuts in things. I eat some sunflower seeds, but they're not a nut. Uh, that, that's mostly it. Walnuts and almonds, 
That's really it, isn't really it? Pretty much it. Uh, cashews occasionally. Oh, yeah. But very, very rarely. Yeah, we haven't had those in weeks. No. So. Um, but that's about it. Um, so we eat them as a snack and in cereal and muesli and all that kind of stuff. Actually, we don't eat cereal, but oatmeal and muesli. Yeah, if I put them in my muesli. Mm-hmm, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I do eat nits. Um, <laughs> another question that we got, and it was a part of a longer question, but I thought it was interesting to talk about because yeah, Almost. you will have taken uh-huh. in more than a pound of extra calories. Now, yeah. Whether you're exercising to burn those calories off or not is a different matter, but you're taking in all those extra calories, right? Mm-hmm. If you do that over a year, and let's, just, let's assume you're eating three Oreos every single day for a year, possible, probably a little out there, but possible, uh, that is 65,620 calories or 18.7 pounds. So if you were to do that every day for a year, take in, let's just say every day for a year you took in 200 extra calories. Maybe it's not... Uh, maybe it's not Oreos, maybe it's some other shit. I don't know what, but if you were to do that every day for a year, you could gain 20 pounds in that year mm-hmm. or 19 pounds in that one year. So that's a stone and some for, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. So um, I just thought I would try to sound all cool with people on the other side of the pond, you know, <laughs> hooking up with some of that UK slang. Well, uh, not slang, it's not slang. It's a uh, every day. Right, it's, vocab. Yeah, <laughs> it's everyday vocab. <laughs> for that. Um, but. But not anyway. The point is, is that, yes, these little things can make a big difference. Yeah. And I think that really illustrates the point we we're trying to make last week, which is the sometimes food can really add up. <laughs> they, can, they can indeed. Um, and also goes along with what we were saying about how you don't necessarily think you're eating all that bad. But the, the saturated fat and white flour that you're eating there, that's the totally devoid of nutrient flour, is... Digested. That means is yeah, you're digested and then does bad things to your body, the saturated fat. Those are the two things combined in one item that makes cholesterol go up. And um and I think the point I was trying to make on the forums a lot was then then you're not eating things that are good for you. You're not right. eating the, the whole foods that would provide great nutrients for you. So like fruit. Mm-hmm. So so yeah, I think it's a, So it's kind it's of really, a double whammy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, like I said, that mindless eating book really does cover this kind of stuff really well because, you know, who thinks three cookies is a lot? Three Oreos. Like right. Throughout deal. a day, you eat one after breakfast, you eat one, two after dinner. You yeah. Know, you don't think of it. Three Oreos is not a big deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could eat three Oreos like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like that, whatever. It's not, it's nothing big. But if you do that regularly enough, it can really add up. Mm-hmm. So that's one point I think is important for us to remember is, and you're right about the sometimes food. It becomes more often than sometimes. Mm-hmm. So um, what else do we have to talk about from, from the show last week? Um, well, we got some, oh, you had, you just read a new book that you wanted to, you talk about a point oh, that you read in there. Someone, um, I, I think Joanne on the forums mm-hmm. had recommended that I check out, um, Brendan Brazier, Brendan Brazier's book Thrive. Thrive yeah. So I start, I just started reading that, uh, interesting book actually, cause he talks, he, and he pushes this chlorella shit really hard and this maca shit really hard. And I don't really know what either are. I mean, it, he, he's going to talk about it later in the book. I'm only in the first 50 pages or so. But anyway, um, interestingly enough, he, he, makes, he makes a point in the book that I think is really vital is that basically because the way that, you know, the, the way that we're always regenerating cells in our body, that you are literally made up of that which you have eaten in the prior year to when you exist, right? So what your body is made up of is what you are consuming. So if you're consuming fatty, junky, horrible, processed chemically laden food you're going to be consisting of those things and therefore not feeling as 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 optimal as you could mm-hmm. i thought that was a pretty powerful point that is and actually a really good point as to why you don't want to eat meat either and dairy and eggs I that's mean, true you're, you become you're, a you're, giant you're, egg <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're eating all of that <laughs> that you know saturated fat cholesterol for health things and then also i think you're just you're just eating those decaying flesh it's yeah not not what i want in my body I agree with you. <laughs> but anyway, but it, Brendan Breezer is interesting because people don't think, you know, that you can be vegan or that you can consist on, you know, subsist on a whole foods diet and be an athlete. But he runs triathlons. He does ultra marathons. Yeah. So, he, yeah. He's a very active athlete mm-hmm. and uh, a professional athlete at that. Yeah. So he has this whole whole system which he he promotes because he believes it is resulted in better performance from athletically. So it's an interesting book, though. Maybe we should try to get him on the show. That'd be cool. Yep. We should. We should. Um, so, all right. Yes, yeah, so we also got a, a email and voicemail feedback we just wanted to lump together right now. Yeah, and I actually want to, I, I want to just, again, say thank you to everyone out there who has written to us about this or who has been in touch with us about this. It was overwhelming and it was cool because we did the show and we were like, ah, we weren't real sure about it, you know? Mm-hmm. That's how well, I felt. Yeah, I wasn't sure if people would like it or not. Or Yeah, I think some of our listeners didn't. But, you know, not, we can't please everyone all the time. No, that's for sure. Yeah. we Not that we ever really try. <laughs> no, we don't try. But the point is, is that I just want to thank everyone out there who's written to us. And we do try to respond 
to you. So um, we did it, we did get some emails and voicemails about this, and I I uh, thought one of them would be one of the emails would be interesting to read. Um, this one's from Tim, and I Tim writes, I really enjoyed your health podcast two years ago, as it related to shit. Do I have that printout here? Did I lose the printout? <laughs> I went to the trouble of printing the damn thing out. Now I can't find it. Anyway, the question was basically um, two pages here. No, that's not uh, it either. Keep talking. Okay. Uh, well, I think that what you're talking about, it. okay, I, you got it. Okay, I'll just go with it. Someone basically wrote in and said, you know, um, we eat pretty well in general, and I'm, I'm just wondering, do you think that a couple, like, vegan Oreos a day makes a difference? Do you think that makes a big difference? And initially, I would, uh, last, before all this shit went down with me, I would think no. But now I think yes. And actually, this is covered really well in a book that's called Mindless Eating mm-hmm. by Brian Wansink. I think is his name. Mm-hmm. He is a professor at Cornell. Interesting book because it talks about these little places in our diet where we can find these kinds of extra calories when we're not looking for them. And I think the, the I just took the example of Numino's and because I don't really know. I'm sure there are other vegan Oreos, but those are the ones I'm familiar with. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure they're all pretty close. Yeah. And so I, I looked at Numino's and I thought, okay, well, let's see. What does three Oreos, three Numino's a day do for you? Oreos are vegan too, aren't they, supposedly? I think now they are. It varies. Like some older formulations had whey in them, but right. now I think most of them are. Yeah. So anyway, if we look at Numino's, um, the product description says a creme-filled wafer cookie. <laughs> <laughs> um, the ingredients aren't so aren't so hot, really. Uh, unbleached flour, organic unbleached flour, organic sugar, powdered sugar, organic palm oil, canola oil, organic cocoa, cocoa. Uh, organic cocoa and cocoa, organic unsweetened chocolate, natural flavor, salt, sodium bicarbonate, and soy less 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 thin, like a thin. Anyway, um, those are the ingredients. But what's interesting about it is is that two cookies is 130 calories, 4.5 grams of fat, and uh, you know, 10 grams of sugar, 20 grams of carbohydrates, all that stuff. To get, to cut to the chase here, three cookies. If you eat three cookies a day, it's 195 calories a day. So if you were to eat that every single day. And most people wouldn't, but let's just say for the sake of the argument, Mm -hmm. you consume three cookies a day. That's 21 cookies a week, which is 1,365 calories in a week of cookies. If you do that for a month, that's 5,460 calories. Now, how many calories in a pound? 3,500. Okay, so that's one month. You've already consumed one pound, Mm -hmm. right? You will have gained a pound. Well, you will... Pound and a half. Today on Vegan Freak Radio, we ask, do Republicans love to kill small animals? We do a follow-up to a few points from last week's health show, do your voicemails and emails, and we run the second Vegan Freak Radio interview with Sarah Kramer. All this week on Vegan Freak Radio number 67 for the 12th of April, 2007. And now, your hosts who proudly say fuck you to the FCC, Bob and Jenna. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I, I uh, fucked up there. Sorry. I messed up. My bad. I screwed up. Um, I screwed up. What can I say? Let me turn this down a little more. It's a little loud. I'm still getting used to our new equipment. <laughs> well, not new equipment, new software. Yeah. So, uh, hey, welcome back. I um, hope everybody's doing well out there. Yep, hope you're all staying healthy after last week's show. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. So uh, let's just get right into the show because we have a, a bunch of things to do and I want to do them. And uh, I don't know. I'm afraid I'm going to run out of energy. Okay. Well, let's do them. Then. Okay. Before we get started, I want to make an announcement. Uh, a happy announcement. For those of you that have been listening to the show for a while, you know who Dino is or if you've been on our forums. Um, Dino has been on the show. He will be on the show again next week um, if things don't fall through, but they shouldn't. And uh, I just want to say, Dino has been working on a cookbook all this time, and the cookbook is now now available for pre-order, and uh, with some special, I hate doing this shit because it sounds so commercial, but special limited time pre-order pricing, 20% off, actually. So if you use the code EM20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off of the, of the book, and you can get it at tofuhoundpress.com slash sell 3 Okay, tofuhoundpress.com slash I sell three. Dino's book, 20% off of the cover price of $17.95. If you order now, it'll ship by the end of April. Uh, but 
enough of that kind of commercial corporate bullshit. Let's move into some of the stuff following up from last week. Okay. I know last week's show was a 